University of South Carolina nursing student Crystal Gilmore Hope wanted to become a nurse to interact with people, knowing at the end of her day she's done something to help someone in a meaningful way. That compassion she brings with her to class each day can't be taught, but how to deal with some of the stressful medical dilemmas that may confront her can be. In this lab on the Columbia campus, Crystal and her classmates are learning how to prioritize care and make sound, rapid decisions about their patients. The students are taught how to listen to the breath sounds and the heart sounds and watch the chest rise and fall. You can listen to bowel sounds. This is a clinical simulation lab in the College of Nursing, set up to imitate a real hospital setting. The patients are high fidelity mannequins with lifelike qualities that can be programmed to have all sorts of health problems. Crystal likens the lab to bridging the gap. Coming in as um, last um, year, juniors, I had never worked. I had only been in the hospital with family members. I had never really worked in the setting, so I was kind of nervous as to going straight from the book, what we see in the book, to working with a human being. So this kind of bridges the gap. You, you kind of are familiar with the poles, the machines that are in the room, how they will work on the individual reactions you might get, how to respond to the reactions, and things just coming up spur the moment that you aren't ready for. There are four high fidelity mannequins in the lab, including one that says he's dying. Also, a mannequin birthing pair that can be programmed to simulate problems in pregnancy and delivery. Erin McKinney is the director of the lab. She says nursing schools have learned from the airlines and the military that simulations make a big difference when training for the real thing. Touching people in clinical when you're a new student is invasive and difficult. So it gives them a chance to kind of practice their ability to interact. It gives them a chance to think on their feet and you know, use their own knowledge from the book in a real world situation. It's the kind of education that's vital in an era of a nationwide nursing shortage, says nursing dean Peggy Hewlett. In a traditional hospital setting, one faculty member oversees the training of eight to ten students. In the simulation lab, dozens can learn from a faculty team. We're really in the midst of a nursing shortage, both here in South Carolina and across the country. And simulation is one way that we can average, we can increase the numbers of students that we have in the program without having to necessarily increase the number of instructors, because we are able to do many students in this environment, whereas we are restricted to one faculty member per eight students in the actual patient care environment. Senior nursing student Sarah Bandish says she's learned in the lab what to do when a patient is in distress and what not to do. I had given the patient the cephalosporin and um, it was IV and when the patient started having an anaphylactic reaction, I started treating symptoms and never stopped the IV. More than 12,000 student hours of lab time will be logged this fall in the nursing school, arming Sarah, Crystal and their classmates with a quality education that will prepare them for the demands of a nursing career. Although clinical simulation labs are developing across the country, this lab puts the University of South Carolina in a class all its own. Technology makes it possible for our nursing school to link to similar facilities at MUSC and Clemson University, allowing our faculty to share ideas and better prepare our students to enter the workforce. I'm Fritchie Brewer at the University of South Carolina.